The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. I'm having the most amazing time with Mel and Hickey. I am loving these programs, Jesus Encounter programs. Mel, I am loving this. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I sat here in amazement as you showed us Jesus in the Old Covenant, in the books of the law, then in Ruth and the Psalms and the prophets, today in the New Testament. Yeah. I am ready for that. Good. So we see the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, are the Gospels. So we see that's the first one. The second one is the book of Acts, and that's history. The third part are the epistles, wonderful, gorgeous how to live epistles. Mm. And then Revelation is really tying us up with Jesus coming back, you know, and establishing us on the earth to rule and reign with him. Now. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, yesterday, you showed us Jesus in the Old Testament. Right. You showed us Jesus in Genesis as the seed of the woman. And then you, you took us through Exodus mm -hmm. and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. Right. And you showed us the, the Messiah in the tabernacle. Right. That was tremendous revelation. And then the amazing truth you showed us on Tuesday in the book of Ruth and the Psalms. Yesterday blew me away in Hosea. Yeah. The story of Hosea is the story of Jesus and his church. Yeah. That was very moving. Now today in the New Testament, but I want to say just one thing to all of you, that the early church did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's right. Those who, you know, became Christians 2,000 years ago had to find Jesus in the Old Testament. And I would encourage every believer watching this program today to do the same because it will enrich your life. As Malin said, 39 books. Just say that one, one more time about okay, 39, 39 revelations books of Jesus. Really. Are, the thir are 39 revelations of Jesus. So somebody may say, well, I never read Malachi. Then you miss that revelation of Jesus. Well, I never read Habakkuk. Well, you miss that revelation of Jesus in that book. And Obadiah has one of the sweetest revelation of Jesus at all. I just love and it. And we're going to show you how you can get all that at the end of the program. I'm ready now to go through the New Testament with you. All let's, right, let's, let's, let's do it. Okay. Let's look at the Gospels. You know, I used to say when I first started reading the Bible, why do we have four stories of the same thing? But then as I read it, I thought they're not the same. They're all about Jesus but it's Jesus in a different aspect. Absolutely. And so it began to unfold Absolutely. to me through reading it. Now, Matthew, it's a long gospel, but it really shows Jesus as a lion. And, of course, these four faces also appear in Ezekiel and Revelation. And what is he? Well, he is an authority. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So you're, you're showing us what Ezekiel saw in the cherub. Yes, okay. yes, and of course, Revelation, right. the four-faced creature. Right. So Jesus is a lion. Why? Because he's the lion of Judah. He has authority. And so he is pictured in authority throughout this gospel. He multiplies the bread. He raises the dead. He constantly is walking in authority. He casts out demons. He's a lion. And when we get Jesus in our hearts, we have the lion inside us. Amen. And I think one of the first things you get excited about is suddenly I have authority in the name of Jesus. And we just go around and, so, and we can do it too much. You know, I'm such an authority, I'm such an authority. Because we're shocked at who he is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now, Marilyn, darling, when, yes. you know, I mean, I've read the New Testament many times, like yes, many, yes. many of us have, many of us have and, and when you see Jesus in Matthew, like you see Mark, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and, and, and I don't want to jump ahead of you, but he's seen as the king, too, in Matthew. Yes. But you, you're describing him more as a lion, lion well, king. A lion king, exactly. Okay. But I want to go over here. Yeah, Is let's that okay? come on. You so bet. I love it. it. 
uh, because I want them to see how... And it's also interesting with the four colors in the tabernacle. Yes. That, that fit perfectly with the four Gospels. I never thought of that. Well, of course, you That's have the wonderful. white and the blue and the scarlet and the purple, and they all fit perfectly with his four offices. Really? Marilyn, darling. I never saw that. Yeah, of course. Well, tell me about well, it. Well, you have the white. Okay. Okay, you have the blue. Yeah. You have scarlet and purple. The purple, he's, he's the king. Okay. Scarlet, he's the savior. White, he's the perfect man. And the blue, the son of God. Oh. And if you take those, they really? fit with the God. So the purple would be Matthew. Yes. And the man is in Mark. Yes. And the savior is in, is in Luke. And the son of God is in John. Wow. Don't you love Beautiful. it? Beautiful. I love it. I love yeah. it. Now, watch this with Matthew. See, that's why we have a great time, because we've known each other for, <laughs> what is it All now? these years. All these years. So, and we always like we, to talk we, the word. We, we always love it. Okay. And I'll say to you sometimes, where did you get that truth? That's so outstanding. <laughs> I'll just take that truth and make it more outstanding. Yes, and she told me that before, by the way, and I love it. Okay, now, it's okay. all yours. Matthew. Now, when we look at Matthew... We see he is a lion in that book, and I'm right. saying that because of authority. Right. So we see him in great authority, and we see him inside us, that we can, he that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. Can I also add in there, Yes. every time you see the color purple in the, in the Bible, that's Jesus. Good. As king. As king. Okay. Okay, so here we see him in us. He, Luke ten nineteen. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, on scorpions, right. over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by me, any means harm you, because he is an authority, and we have that authority to take his name and bind the devil. Right. So we say, wonderful. But you could get out of balance always being an authority. So we have Mark, and Mark is pictured as an ox. So when we look at Mark, we see him as a servant. And so what do we see him in? I'm going to put the uh, picture beside it. We see him as an ox. What does an ox do? An ox pulls burdens. An ox can be a sacrifice. Wow. So it is a serving animal. So if we say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a lion, I'm a lion. Yeah, but sometimes you're going to be an ox. Sometimes you're going to serve. Now, I'm going to add something to this. going to okay. be amazing. He's known in Mark as the perfect man. So basically, too, he is the servant man. Exactly. He, he, he's come to serve. Right. But he became flesh to serve. Right. So what did he do? He waited on them. You know, he washed their feet. He constantly served. He's called the servant king. Even. And that color, by, by the way, Theologians say is the white color. Absolutely. And wonderful. that's in the tabernacle. You remember in the gate yes. are those four colors. So right. he is the gate to the mm -hmm. presence of God too. And helps you to serve. Now I'm going to tell a story about my husband. Go ahead. When I would travel and speak, I'd come home and Wally would always say, well, how was your meeting? You know, and uh, I'd try to tell him and then he didn't really want to listen. And I said, uh, well, don't you want to listen? He said, no. He said, I don't need a lion. I need somebody to cook, and you need to wash. Everything is dirty. <laughs> so what is it? I love that. It's a balance. Of course it is. Sometimes we take authority, but sometimes we're there to wait on people and to help people. That's why he washed their feet mm -hmm. now. That's exactly. Exactly. Yeah, God, that's precious. And so he is an ox. So if I think of Mark, it's short. It has a lot of immediately, immediately, immediately. Because he served. But think about the Son of God doing that. That's I what know. is amazing. I know. That Jesus would come to serve. And that's why he washed her feet. Exactly. And he said, if I'm doing it to you, then you ought to serve each other. And look, in heaven, it says he will gird himself and serve us. He is constantly a servant. So you can never say, well, Lord. I've arrived, Good I don't God, serve. What a Lord. And another thing. Makes you love him even more. Oh, my goodness. That he serves. And that he and us will help us to serve others. Precious, precious Jesus. It's just awesome. Serving him is, is everything to us. Serving the Lord. I mean, you think about that he would serve us. It's like, what a, what a Savior. I know. To serve and to be loyal to and to die for. Right. If he died for us, 
It's a joy to die for him. Yeah. And I think this too, serving people. Now, I've noticed on a plane, if I serve someone something, you know, somebody says, oh, I'm sick. And I say, well, what can I do to help you? You know, let me serve you. Oh, they respond to me. And one time I was on a plane and this woman was vomiting and vomiting. So when the plane landed, there's a lot of turbulence. I said, the Lord said to me, help her with her purse and with her luggage. So I said to her, I saw you were so sick. Could I help you with your luggage? Could I carry your purse? She said, if I wanted someone to help me, I'd ask the stewardess. I thought, oh, brother, did I say the wrong thing? So now watch. I get off the plane. And I'm walking across the pavement, and the joy of the Lord flooded over me. I said, Lord, why are you blessing me like this? That woman didn't even listen to me. He said, but you listened to me. I will never forget at the Fairview Mall, I was 19 years old. I just got saved. And there was a lady coming out of of the mall who was on a wheelchair. And the Lord spoke to me to go help her into her car. And as I'm helping her, and she was quite sweet to me, not like the one that you were trying to help. <laughs> Yeah. As I was leaving the car, the joy of the Lord flooded my soul, and I felt like a blanket of glory covered me. I was stunned, and the Lord said to me, he said, because you, were, you served that, that, that lady, I'm blessing you with my presence. It's amazing that you would say what you just said. And I just got saved when that happened. Wow. I learned something about God. And here Christ you are, and you. Yeah, but here you are Serving. teaching about how the Lord really blesses us and, oh. re- and responds in blessing us when we serve each other. Exactly. Even that lady who was coming out of the mall, that I did not know who she was from Adam, yeah. but she was on a wheelchair trying to get into a car. Serving. That's Jesus. That's, Je- that's his nature. That's his nature. So I look. I'm a lion sometimes. Yeah, precious. Wow. Sometimes I'm an ox because he wants me to serve. But... I'm going to kind of skip ahead here to John. Let's go. Okay. So let's take John. And John is the most unusual gospel because John really shows Jesus divinity. Mm -hmm. And so I think he is the eagle. Why? Because the eagle. Wow, that's powerful. The eagle flies the highest of all birds, builds the biggest nest, most complete nest. And you see... We see Christ in us, the hope of glory. And you have those glorious moments when you wake up and maybe he gives you a scripture, he gives you a dream, or Jesus becomes so real to you in something, or you experience the glory of God. One time, I was in my office and I was really, really tired. And I thought, I've got a long day. I'm going to take a quick nap, close the door, pull the blind, lock the door. And I lay down. I'm not worried about anything. I don't have Jesus on my mind. I'm just sleepy. Take a nap. And I awakened, and there was the most unusual peace in my office. Mm. And I saw the glory of God coming through the office door. And it just stood there. And the Lord said to me, I took you through, miraculously, through the death of your father, the death of your mother, and it will be a miracle through your husband. That was two years ago. When my husband died... The anointing of God came on me in a fresh new way. Well, I see it all over here. You know that, right? Do you? Yeah, I do. Wally just passed away what, yeah, a few months ago. Yeah. Wow. And so we see those heavenly experiences when we're caught up and we experience the glory of God. And he wants that for us. Absolutely. And John is gorgeous. And may I add, this is oh, the please. color blue here. Yes. This divinity. Is the, yeah, exactly. Divinity. But Luke... If you look at the creature in some places, you will see the first creature they see is a man. Okay, so this face that faces you is a man. Now, if you could turn and look that way for me. Which way? Come and stand with your back this way. Okay. This way, okay. So the first thing they see is a man. Then they see the lion because this is a perfect square. Right. So turn turn back that way for a moment. This way. It, yeah. Okay. And then on the back, because this is a square, yeah. they see an eagle. Okay? All right? Yes, ma'am. Then they see an ox. So they see the lion. They see the ox in Mark. 
They see the eagle in John, but that's not the first thing the world sees. The world sees a man. Oh, for goodness sake. And now sake. think wow. about Luke. It is so gorgeous. It has more about angels, has more about women than any of the Gospels. And what is it that Jesus identified with us? He was tempted in all ways as we are. He got tired. You know, he had harassments and all kinds of things. And he says he understands because he came in the flesh and was tempted. Now, so that's the side of him that is revealed to humanity. Yeah, and this is what I think. Why that face? When you meet people who don't know Christ, they don't want to see a lion. If you say, man, I cast out demons. I have great authority. I cause the yeah, storms to stop. scare them away, exactly. Them. But if you say, I'm an ox. I'm always serving. I'm always at church. I shovel the walks. They think, you are a drag. You're so dull. And if you say, oh, I'm an eagle. I pray in tongues. They say, that's a nutcase. But if they see you as a human, and I've always been able to win my hairstylist. If I can go two or three times, I can win them. Because oh. I don't go in and say, oh, I teach the Bible on television. I've memorized the books of the Bible. I go in and say, do you like to cook? <laughs> oh, yeah, I like to cook. <laughs> do you have children? Oh, yes, I have three children. Oh, I have a son and drug. And I just act like a person. Exactly. And then as a person... They begin to unfold. Well, they, they and overseas, exactly. same way, hairstylist. You can win them if you'll be personable. Because people are looking for someone who will be understanding of them. They don't understand the lion, the eagle, the ox. But, oh, they understand when we will be personally involved with them. Melon, that's awesome. Deep. So Jesus is all for. And he's inside us. Wow. Christ in us. The and can I just glory. finish with the colors? Of course, of course. We, we see the four colors yes. in the Bible. We see the purple and the white and the blue and the scarlet. And yes. this is the scarlet one because this is where, you know, he is the savior of, of the world. Right. So when, whenever you see those four colors, it, it talks about the Lord. And, you know, I think this is kind of unusual. One time I was sitting on a plane by a man I wanted to witness because, you know, on planes, you're... They can't get out. So I always try the door, mm. you know. So this man said to me, uh, I said to him, what do you do? That usually opens it up. Well, he said, I'm an engineer. What do you do? I said, well, I'm a pastor's wife. Oh, he said, what a dull life. He said, you can't smoke, can you? Oh, I said, I smoke all I want to. <laughs> and he said, really? I wow. said, oh, yeah. He said, but you can't drink. Oh, I said, I drink all I want to. He said, does your husband know this? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> He said, well, you can't sleep around. Oh, I said, I commit adultery all I want to. I just don't want to because I have Jesus inside me. <laughs> and you got God, him then. <laughs> God showed me that I could identify with him and not compromise. He laughed and he was open. Then I have a card and it shows information, shows my picture. But on the back, it has a miracle prayer. Hmm. I prayed a prayer at 16 and invited wow. Jesus into my heart. I'm 81. He's never left. He's given me a supernatural life, and I have eternal life. So I say to them, this prayer changed my life, and I'd like to share this prayer with you. Would mm. you mind? And they say, no, where is it? And sometimes they say, why don't you pray it with me? Can we do that now? Yes. Let's. Oh, yes. Please. Yes, yes. One prayer. Maybe you're backslidden today. You say, I've prayed the prayer, but your life is out of sync. It's just out of sync. And you don't have to clean up to come back. You, it's a come-as-you-are party. He does the cleaning. Amen. His blood cleanses us. Amen. Maybe you have never prayed that prayer. That's this is the best day of your life when Amen. you pray this prayer. So pray with me. Say, Father, I know you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I repent of all my sins, all the garbage in my life. I have faith in the blood of Jesus to cleanse me from all sin. Jesus, you died for me and you arose from the dead. Now I invite you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. 
thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen. Best prayer you ever prayed. I haven't met anyone who said, oh, I'm so sorry I prayed that prayer. I'd rather go to hell than heaven. <laughs> Everybody's oh, wow. happy. Boy, Malin, you've, be you've blessed me, blessed me, blessed me. Now, tomorrow on the program, you're going to yes. continue with the epistles and revelation. And then we're going to pray for the sick together. She and I will pray for yes. you to be healed. Now, listen. This amazing woman of God took us through the Old Testament, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today, the Gospels. You have got to get the whole thing because to see Jesus in the Old Testament would change your life. It would deepen your True. walk with God. It would establish you in a way no storm can knock you out. Mm -hmm. And all of this is in this amazing yes. Jesus yes. encounter. Right, right. Now, dear Marilyn, tell the people what's in this. I mean, I'm fascinated by it, but I'd like you to talk more about why you wrote this. It, and it took you 40 years. Yeah. It did. Four zero. To study and get the revelation of it. And then I had a passion to get people in the book. Because if you don't get people in the Bible, they don't have a victorious life. You've got to put the truth in here. So I wanted to get them hooked on the whole book. So I began teaching the whole Bible as a survey course. Old Testament one year, New Testament the next year. Mm. And I put this together. Because I always had a passion to know Jesus in every book. But it took time. I mean, it didn't come overnight. So my passion is to get everyone watching this program in the whole Bible. The whole Bible. And so I have special notes of who Jesus is in every book. I have special notes of how the Old Testament is quoted in the New Testament. I mean, you will be fascinated by it. Do you know Jesus quoted from the Old Testament? If he thought it was important, don't you think you should? <laughs> and it would it would oh, strengthen your Christian yes. life. Listen, the people 2,000 years ago that found Jesus in the Old Covenant were so committed to him, They, many of them were martyred for the Lord. I mean, think about those in Rome that right. were really torn apart by animals right. when Nero was, was, was right. that mad emperor that killed many of them. And they did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. No, they didn't. All they had is the Old Testament. That's true. And found Jesus in the Old Covenant and were powerful believers. I ask often, how many of you want to be real Christians? Every hand goes up. Well, you can't be a real Christian without knowing the Lord through the Scripture. Exactly. Because if you read Genesis as a historical book, you're going to lose interest soon because you say, well, I know it. Yeah. If you read Exodus as the story of Israel coming out of Egypt, okay, that's all. Then you, you kind of lose interest. But if you see Jesus in those books, think about the endless revelations that will keep coming oh. your way. And that's what is exciting. It is. There's no end to the, to the riches you find in the Old Covenant. Get this today for a gift of $50 to the ministry. Listen, I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you should buy the books... That would give you this info. It would be over a thousand dollars easily, oh, easy, easy. way more than that, I'm easy. sure. You can get this entire thing for the, just a gift of fifty dollars to the ministry, a whole Jesus encounter in every book of the Bible, right. and you're looking at a DVD that you you'll also get free when you call of these programs we're doing together. So all five programs coming to you free for calling. Yeah. This is this is really remarkable. Now, tomorrow, let's talk about what you're going to talk oh, about tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is wonderful because we'll hit Acts. That's the history yes, part of the New Testament. We'll hit the epistles. Oh, and it's so exciting. And I've memorized the book of Revelation. So you're going to have to put a time limit on me <laughs> because I really like to teach <laughs> Revelation. So tomorrow... You've memorized the whole book. The whole book. It wow. took me almost three years. I got discouraged and thought, I'm not going to do it. And then I repented and did it. <laughs> okay, tomorrow, don't miss the program, no. whatever you do. Before we say goodbye, can you pray over the needs of the people? Oh Let's believe yes. right now together that God Almighty will, will save your loved ones and meet every need in people's lives. Right. Let's Father, do it now, every kind of a need is here. Yes, Jesus. You know, people are hurting inside. People are sick in their bodies. People are depressed and discouraged, mentally confused. People have financial needs that's just overwhelming them. But Lord, when we look at you, 
All things are possible to him that believeth. And we believe for every one of these needs to be supernaturally amen, met by Lord. your power, by your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And tomorrow tune in to be healed by the power of Almighty God at the end of the program. You know, I just, uh, there's, there's a lady watching, just quickly. I just, I just, yes. I, I feel that from the Lord. There's a lady watching with cancer. Precious Lord, heal that dear woman mm. in Jesus' name. We rebuke this cancer today in Jesus' name. Heal her today for your glory and honor. We rebuke it. Rebecca is your name. Mm. You know, the Lord is so gracious because he knew you could not wait till tomorrow. And you actually cried out and said, Lord, please heal me. Dear Jesus, heal Rebecca. Mm -hmm. We rebuke this cancer in Jesus' name. You have throat cancer, Rebecca. And just as I was about to talk about something else here, the Lord just stopped me to tell mm -hmm. you that God is healing you. In fact, she's a, I, I see a young lady named Rebecca. That God is... is she's young. She's young, yeah. In fact, they, they call you Beck. That's your nickname. I'm talking to you. Isn't Jesus awesome amazing? Awesome Jesus. Wow. Awesome Jesus. I want you all to get this for free. The Lord interceding for you, for you and me in this portrait. This actually hangs in my bedroom. And I said to one of our guys, I said, we got to get this to our partners. Because it's so, it so strengthens me, you know. Yeah. So I took a little picture of it. And it's actually very similar to this, what we're putting together for you. With a prayer on the bottom that I put for you. And of course, the scripture from Hebrews 7:25. You gotta get it. It would be a blessing to you. And help me take the gospel to the ends of the earth. In fact, I'm I'm going to South America. I'm going to be in Brazil, and in uh, in Colombia, in February, and on and on from there. Africa in March, and and I love the way God is using you. And please support my sweet friend Marilyn. Thank you. The, her address is on the screen. So bless her life, and God will truly bless you. Tomorrow, an amazing program. Don't miss it. Love you. Bye-bye. Pastor Benny Hinn will be in San Jose, California tonight to conduct a great miracle service at Jubilee Christian Center. Join him at 7 p.m. and again tomorrow at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Then he'll visit the Los Angeles area for services at Faithful Central Bible Church in Inglewood this Saturday and Sunday at 7 each evening. For more information on these and other events, please visit the ministry website. As Pastor Benny continues to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, your prayerful and financial investment in this worldwide ministry is crucial. By becoming a covenant partner, you're helping save souls, see bodies healed, and lives changed. To sow your seed and for information about becoming a covenant partner, write to Benny Hinn. You may also call toll-free or make your gift online at BennyHinn.org.